So then we will move to uh, uh, next speaker, Dr. Sanath Kumar. Uh, so good morning everyone. I'm Dr. Sanath from uh, MAMSI. I'm a third year postgraduate resident. My topic is uh, ocular complication in children of nephrotic syndrome on oral steroids. So uh, we all know uh, nephrotic syndrome is the most common kidney disease in pediatric population in which oral steroids are con considered the first line treatment. But several studies have shown that lack of awareness causes steroid induced glaucoma which is responsible for around one fourth of secondary glaucoma in children. Uh, and the most common complications seen are cataract and glaucoma. So uh, the study that we did was a cross-sectional observational study of 101 children of nephrotic syndrome over a period of one year period. And the nephrotic syndrome children aged five to 18 years on oral steroids for at least 12 weeks were included. And we excluded the children who were on tropical steroids for uh, some reason or any children with developmental cataract and congenital glaucoma. So our primary outcome was to measure proportion of glaucoma and cataract. The secondary outcome was to measure level of awareness among caregivers as well as, as, well as the pediatricians uh, regarding ocular side effects. Uh, so we included uh, uh, the children. We uh, did some evaluation and a close-ended structure questionnaire for awareness was administered for both uh, caregivers as well, uh, as well as the pediatricians. So the parameters uh, evaluated were type of nephrotic syndrome, the doses and duration of oral steroids that were used, best corrected visual acuity, uh, CCT corrected uh, intraocular pressure using uh, eye care rebound tonometer with uh, lens status and fundus and disc status. And uh, with the questionnaire, we assessed the level of awareness among caregivers as well as the pediatricians. So the, uh, we included 101 children, uh, uh, around 57% being boys and 43% being girls. 88% were steroid sensitive nephrotic syndrome, uh, whereas uh, around 12% were steroid resistant. Uh, we found that around 4% of children had uh, posterior subcapsular cataract, although all of them were visually insignificant. The mean steroid use was uh, around 4000 uh, plus minus uh, 1300 milligrams with an average duration of 47 plus minus 21 weeks. It was not significant as compared to the children with clear lens. Whereas six children, around 6% uh, showed a high IOP spike where the duration and dose were statistically significant as well as we saw glaucometer scupping in around 5% of children. Uh, so uh, this is an image of a posterior subcapsular cataract. Uh, this kid had around 2.8 millimeters of PSC with no uh, uh, visual deterioration. Whereas this is another child with around 0.8 is to 1 cupping. Uh, this child was also asymptomatic. Uh, we assessed uh, the level of uh, awareness among the caregivers using a questionnaire, uh, uh, caregivers as well as a pediatrician. Around 100% uh, uh, around of the caregivers were not aware of the ocular side effects of uh, uh, oral steroids. Whereas uh, when we assessed pediatricians, around uh, almost all of them uh, uh, were aware of the side effects, although only 62% reported that they are aware that both cataract and glaucoma can occur with uh, oral steroids. Screening guidelines and time frame were unclear and 16% being unsure of how often a child of nephrotic syndrome should be evaluated. So in conclusion, uh, we saw IOP and glaucometer scupping was associated with higher doses as well duration. Caregivers were lacking uh, awareness and pediatrician were infrequently advising routine evaluation. So these are uh, our recommendation that at the time of diagnosis only, all children should go a routine ophthalmic evaluation. Patients and caregivers should be counseled about the asymptomatic nature of these complications and pediatricians should uh, routinely uh, get their patients evaluated. Thank you. Thank you, Sanat. Excellent concept, excellent uh, topic you have chosen. I don't think anybody has dealt with this before. Only thing is that uh, you didn't talk about the age distribution of your patients because that's very important. So yeah. what is the general age of the children who had a nephrotic syndrome? Uh, sir, uh, usually, uh, actually, a lot of child present within the uh, this age range of five years, four to six years, mm -hmm. were the, uh, I mean, the major 
age of onset that we see. Why I'm telling you is because mm-hmm. assessment of glaucoma in a child is difficult, right? Mm-hmm. The only thing that you can do is probably measure the corneal diameter, see the disc, all these things. Right. But if you have a child who is old enough to do a field charting, maybe you will not have the normative values. Right, right. But right. you will at least get a trend. Right, sir. Did you get the OCTs done, RNSL of these children? Yes, sir. The children who were cooperative, mm. we did their visual field analysis also mm. and uh, uh, this uh, OCT also. So how, did but you, how did you confirm that they have developed glaucoma? Only by the IOP, nothing else? No, sir. No, sir. With mm. IOP as well as the disc evaluation. Uh, in children, if only IOP is high without any disc changes also, then uh, then also we were closely monitoring the child. And if there was sustained raised intraocular pressure, we started on anti-glaucoma medication and kept the patients on regular follow-up. Uh, in, uh, in our study, there were uh, cooperative children above the age of uh, around 10 years, they were cooperative for visual field analysis. So we got a baseline in the visual field, although we can't comment on the visual field changes, but we were keeping a baseline so that we can follow, follow them up on regular intervals. So I think it's a very good starting point for you to go further on the study and yes, see sir. the actual onset of glaucoma in these patients who are going to be on steroid treatment for a very long time. Right. And you can probably include other autoimmune problems and all that which are steroid used in a prevalent form. Very good. Thank you. So Thank what you. was the nature of this study? Was it a prospective study or was it no. a cross-sectional it study? It was a cross-sectional observational study. Cross-sectional yes, observational sir. study. Criteria for these children? So, first was uh, chi- children who were not cooperative for evaluation, uh, age less than f- uh, five years of age. Uh, second of all, p- patients who are taking oral uh, stero- uh, topical steroids for VKC or any other thing, we w- excluded them. And anyone with uh, congenital uh, glaucoma or congenital cataract. Okay. These were the major exclusion criteria. Congenital cataract, how did you know in a cross sectional? Uh, the type of cataract. Yes, yeah, so because all of them had posterior subcapsular cataract, it's yeah. w- uh, well known that uh, secondary cataract is mostly p- posterior subcapsular. Okay. Following this study, following this study, did the referrals increase? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we were uh, associated with the pediatrics department of MAMC. So uh, as soon as we started, it was a one year long study. So it became a routine that uh, all kids were sent to us, whoever presented in the nephropathic uh, uh, clinic. Good. Just one, I- when you present, uh, when you say cataract, that time only if you show the photograph, it will bring a flow in your presentation for future identification. Otherwise, it looks incoherent. Thank you. Thank you so much.